The Tigers of Carroll opened up their district play with a road test in Webster City. The Lynx came into Friday night's contest with a 3-1 record and over 1,000 rushing yards as a team already on the year. Here's a scoop in the skinny gentlemen. It is week one. Everything's about one, remember. We make the, we get that first serve. We get them off the field. I want that deep, so defensive guys running off with their hands up. One, one. Offense, we get our first touchdown. One, one. We get a uh, field goal. One. Everything is about get this one in the book. One, we, this is week one to us. Everything's about that. It's all about the team. It's all about your model. All in, all for one. Let's go. Captains, take care of business right now. Here we go, here we go. Keep watching as we take this time to thank our sponsors, Roselle Mutual Insurance, McFarland Clinic, and Mackie Motors. Link showed their dominant run game early and often, making it look easy on drive number one, putting up seven points. And it's a handoff. They go left side to Mathis. He's got all kinds of running room. He takes it in far sideline for the two-yard touchdown. Trey Mathis puts Webster City on the scoreboard. The offense got off to a slow start for the Tigers, but the defense got more comfortable as the night went on. An interception from Slade Siebenhaller would help that cause. Oh, here <laughs> Oh, he just has to heave it up, and it's picked off by Siebenhaller. That was a hope and a prayer from Dave Humphrey. Steven Aller read it all the way, jumped in front of the receiver, and you mentioned it. Maybe they can get an interception, and they do. The turnover seemed to be a, the spark the Carroll offense needed as they went on to put up seven points of their own, thanks to a one-yard plunge from Ryan Johnston. Vincent under center, Tigers looking to tie up the football game. They go back to Johnston. Johnston bowls his way into the end zone, and the Tigers are on the scoreboard now. One-yard touchdown run. The two would stay locked at seven points for most of the half, but on the Tigers' last drive of the second quarter, they found the big play they'd be looking for. Here's Vincent, the slant. They go to Feldman. He's got the first down and a whole lot more juice out of defender inside the 20 and outside, uh, down inside at the 18-yard line. The Carroll offense was able to get on the board again with under a minute left to go until the break. Again on a Ryan Johnston one-yard touchdown run. When the Carroll Tigers have a halftime lead, both of their touchdowns came in the second quarter. Webster City's touchdown came on the opening drive of the fall game. Keep watching as we take this time to thank our sponsors, Roselle Mutual Insurance. McFarland Clinic, and Mackey Motors. The Tigers looked to maintain ball security throughout the second half, but a misfortunate bounce led the Lynx to a hopeful opportunity. Woosley tipped, and it's intercepted. Off the double ricochet, and that's not what Carroll needed. The flag down in the backfield as Tyler Olsen tries to take it all the way home for the pick six. He will. Near side, touchdown on the far side. But two flags down near the 40-yard line. The, the interception will stand. Thankfully, Coach Rowetter's defense was up to the task, maintaining the Lynx's threatening run game. The Tigers seem to be running away with this one, but a call that didn't go their way would keep Webster City in the ballgame. Looks down the left side for Christensen. Christensen makes the catch, jukes out the defender, a flag down, he takes it to the house, touchdown, 62 yards, we'll see what the flag is for. The next possession after the offensive pass interference, the Lynx put six on the board, but no extra point is a guarantee. The point, oh the snap is bad, ball is loose, and Webster City will not add to 13, it comes up tackled at the 15-yard line, and that will come back to bite 
Webster City, potentially. Carroll's offense would have a demoralizing drive on the Lynx defense, converting on not one, not two, but three fourth downs in Webster City territory. The Tigers' consistent effort to run the ball would lead them to pay dirt, which also met Ryan Johnson's third touchdown on the night. Give to Johnson, and there's touchdown number three. I hope you got him on your fantasy team. There's another six. Chase Gladden was a monster all night, and the Tigers were looking to put this game on ice, but a tough call that didn't go their way would keep those hopes on hold. Fake handoff, and here comes Gladden. The sack, the ball blues, it's picked up by Dickren. But they're going to call it incomplete. Oh, he takes it boy. into the end zone, and Humphrey's slow to get up. But that call wouldn't end up mattering because on the next play, the senior lineman in the black and orange would go on to cause havoc one more time. And one more time was all that was needed to secure Carroll's 1-0 record. High snap, Moore will boot it away, but it's blocked. Chase Glenn, and it's taken back for a touchdown. <laughs> Tigers score on the block, Caden Cook. So Chase Gladden didn't get the strip sack before. They called it incomplete. He gets the punt block, and it's a touchdown for the yeah, Tigers. Yeah. Howard walks onto the field, and the Tigers will pick up their second win of the season. Snap their two-game losing streak. They'll move to 2-3 and three on the year. Thank you for watching this week's Roselle Mutual Game of the Week. Stick with us with these advertisements to see which area schools we'll be featuring next week. Keep watching as we take this time to thank our sponsors. Roselle Mutual Insurance, McFarland Clinic, and Mackey Motors. This coming Friday will feature a huge Class 2A matchup as the Kemper Knights travel to Jefferson to take on Greene County. Make sure to stay tuned all year long for high school football coverage.